The Charlotte Hornets, a franchise known for going 7-59, drafting Michael Kidd Gilchrist over Bradley Bill and Damian Lillard, overpaying Nicholas Batum, who didn't help the team at all during the stint, and just not always making good decisions. But it looks like all those years of mistakes have paid off because they look to be hitting in the right direction moving forward with their first good move, surprisingly being not resigned their star point guard in Kimball Walker. They went on to draft P.J. Washington and LaMelo Ball, as well as sign veteran wing Gordon Hayward. Even though he has dealt with injuries, the team is moving in the right direction and was on track for a playoff berth, if not for some bad luck, which got me thinking, where do the Hornets go from here? But before I get too deep into the video, do your boy a solid and hit the like button, as well as subscribe to the channel as your support is really appreciated. I'm really close to 100 subscribers as a recording of this video, so help your boy out, get him to 100 subscribers, and after that, give me the 500 subscribers. Your boy want it all. Now I'm just playing. But thank you so much for your continued support, and with that out of the way, drop the intro. So, quick recap on the Hornets season. They finished with a record of 33 and 39. They were 22nd in offensive rating, 18th in defensive rating, and 20th in pace. The organization has somewhat drafted well in the last few years with LaMelo Ball, PJ Washington, Miles Bridges, and even Malik Monk, who had a career year last year. Now, I do wish they would have kept SGA, but if they would have stuck with him back in the 2017 draft, there's a chance that they miss out on LaMelo, and honestly, I think LaMelo has superstar written all over him. Love me some SGA, but if I'm a Hornets fan, I like LaMelo more. I do have some concerns about James Borrego. Now, I think he's a decent coach. He's not Luke Walton level of terrible, but this year he made LaMelo Ball come off the bench for a while, which I get. You got to earn your stripes. But LaMelo had proven pretty early on in the season that he was a better player than Devontae Graham. And I believe had he had started a little earlier, that might have won a few more extra games and gave them more of a cushion. So when the injuries played the team, they probably still would have made the playoffs. They probably would have been like the sixth seed, but they still would have made the playoffs and avoided the play-in tournament. His style of coaching reminds me of Mike Malone, who I think is about an average NBA coach. So I believe he's okay being the coach for the next few seasons. But eventually when they're ready to take that next step, he might need to be on the way out. And that's just my opinion on James Borrego. I'm not as high on him as I am on some of the other coaches on these up-and-coming teams. But... He's a solid coach. Now, outside of the things that the Charlotte Hornets have already done pretty well, again, drafting really well, and then the signing of Gordon Hayward, which I thought was going to be a bust, actually proved to be the right move. I think he was very important to this team's development. He's a mature body veteran who came in the locker room and just probably helped out a whole lot. I mean, yeah, he got injured, and that's often what Gordon Hayward is. He's often injured. That's the biggest problem with him. But when he was on the court, I think the young guys gravitated towards him. I think he really opened up the games. With uh, his playmaking outside of Melo, his playmaking in the starting lineup was very uh, crucial to the team's success. And I really like what he has done here. I say all that to say, while his value is at his highest, let's get rid of him. I like him. I think he might be better than some other people that he can trade him for. But his contract is a little bit funny. With him always being injured and him not quite being on the same timeline as a LaMelo and some of these other young guys like P.J. Washington and Miles Bridges, it might just be best to move on from him while the, you know, while the griddle is still hot. While his value is still high, it's time to probably get rid of Gordon Hayward. And a trade I would propose is trading Gordon Hayward and the 11th pick for Andrew Wiggins, James Wyman, and the 7th pick. And it's quite simple. The reason why the Warriors would do that is if they weren't able to somehow get Kawhi Leonard or they weren't able to make a move to get someone like Bradley Bill, Gordon Hayward would probably be their best option. He provides playmaking and shooting. And again, he just does things that somehow turns into wins. That's what he did. He was making Boston pretty good. I know he wasn't the catalyst behind the success of Boston. But last year when he was in Boston, they were better than they were this year. Without him, they fell down. So he's a good player. He will uplift the team. And along with Steph Curry, he's going to provide playmaking and shooting right next to Steph Curry. So you can play him right next to Klay Thompson. He's going to open up the floor, kind of fill in that Andre Iguodala role, but more offensive savvy. I really like that Gordon Hayward could provide that to the team. I think it'll be really good. And the reason why the Hornets do it is because they get Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman, and the seventh pick. Uh, Andrew Wiggins had a career resurgence over there in Golden State. He finally found his niche. He finally found his role. Last year, I caught myself saying multiple times, look at Wiggins putting people on the island. That means he 
he was locking people up. His defense was extraordinary last year. He's not a star. He's not anything like that. But what he is is someone who can play pretty good defense. He has shown the ability to knock down threes at a decent clip. He shot above average, I believe he shot like 38% for three last season. So he's a pretty decent enough shooter that you could trust him to knock down some threes. And if you need him to score, he can do that. He could be a volume scorer for it. So he is another option to score. Now you are going to lose some playmaking, um, which is kind of sad. You don't really want to lose playmaking when you have somebody like um, LaMelo Ball. But, you know, he's such a great playmaker. He can, you know, basically handle most of the playmaking duties. And then as far as secondary playmaking goes, you still got Terry Rozier who at one point was a point guard. He could provide secondary playmaking next to LaMelo Ball if y'all don't end up moving him. And I feel like his fit over there in Charlotte was perfect last year. He was just filling in his role. And if you need him to do a little bit more playmaking, I believe he can do that. So losing Gordon Hayward while you lose that playmaking, while it does hurt, you're getting some playmaking from, you know, you're getting more playmaking opportunities from Terry Rozier. If y'all still have Devontae Graham on your team, he could fill in some of the playmaking roles coming off the bench. P.J. Washington, I think, is a better playmaker than advertised. I think he probably can do a little bit of playmaking from the full court as he kind of reminds me of a Paul Millsap type of player. Miles um, Bridges also can do some playmaking. Not great, but he's not really... I mean, he can do some. We've seen him be able to make a couple plays and make some passes. So I feel like it could be more of a team effort. But, you know, Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman will fit the, you know, timeline a little bit better. Um, they get that center that they're dying for, they're looking for. They've been trying to find that center, and they haven't really been able to do it. James Wiseman is looking like he's on his way out of Golden State. To me, it just all adds up and makes sense. So, um, And I haven't even brought up anything about the 11th pick for the 7th. You get to move up four spots, and you finally might be able to get your guy Moses Moody. He's going to be available at 7. You can go ahead and pick him up, or you can pick up whoever you want. You get more of a chance because it's barely outside the top five, and there's at least seven really good players in the draft. You're going to get a really good player at seven not that you can't get a good one at 11 but seven you get a better one at least in my opinion depending on where you're looking at it from because actually at 11 the pick that i have him taking at 11 he's really good so he might actually end up should have been a top seven pick but we'll find out years down the line uh other things that i mentioned i know i mentioned you know terry rosier really helping they lose gordon hayward but it's also possible they do do a terry rosier trade you know his contract's coming up they do he's extension eligible this summer so that is another option for them there's a possible Devontae graham signing trade out there depending on Devontae graham if he wants to continue to back up Lamelo. you know he had a really good year the year before Lamelo came uh, and took his spot and everything so he might just want to go somewhere else and be a starting caliber guard for another team and there's probably some teams out there that i really love to have Devontae graham he can shoot the ball and he has decent playmaking ability so Devontae graham is definitely another option that could be a possible signing trade that could get some assets for him um lastly there could be also a possible malik monk signing trade malik monk did have a career year last year in charlotte but you know they do have to you know decide if they want to give him that contract extension all this other stuff um one good year you know in a contract year those kind of deals are kind of risky they probably don't want to overpay him too much and you know if they decide they can't come to an agreement i would not be surprised to see a malik monk sign a trade even though i would you know bet against it, i really like malik monk especially as a six man um, and they can get them somewhere between eight to ten million a year, maybe even you know really around the eight million year mark. That would be perfect, you know, thirty two million for four years or something like that. That would be excellent. But if not, I wouldn't really want to go too much higher than ten million a year, um, because again, he's just probably going to be a six man, come up the bench, do some scoring. But I wouldn't really want to overpay him at this moment in his career. Now covering the draft, the best case scenario for them and the most realistic case scenario. It's been to draft either Alfred Sigun at 11, Moses Moody, or Fred Wagner, or James Bowden. Those are the picks available for them, and those would be able to, you know, what I would say they should go for. I hope that somehow Moses Moody falls down to them, but if not, you know, because again, I'm doubting that he makes it to number seven, especially how the lottery played out. Uh, he's probably going to end up in Orlando. That's my belief. I think he's going to go number eight to Orlando, so I don't think he's going to be available, but if they do don't get him again al perrin sagoon he's not really talked about much in the community but he is really really good when i talk about this guy just think about this you know demontis sabonis take demontis sabonis and make him more athletic that's al perrin sagoon he's basically a more athletic demontis sabonis he can jump move get out there and play the guy is good like he probably deserves more credit and i'm probably devaluing him by saying that i'd rather have moses moody because i think he can be better than moses moody this guy is good like the guy can really play i expect him to be a beast in the league he's gonna be a steal of the draft one of them but and they really do need help at the center so let me take that back no nah, i think alperin sigun who should be available at 11 because again there's not a lot of information on this guy the media doesn't really talk about him because he's overseas and everything but anybody who knows anybody like if you follow the draft 
you can just see how special this guy is. This guy can really go out there and flat out play. So I would definitely take out Alfred Sagoon. Again, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong as well. But, you know, take that guy. He's really good. He will fill in the center position. But if you are able to make a Gordon Hayward trade, uh, since you're getting back James Wiseman, then I would suggest not taking him. But if you don't make a trade to somehow acquire a James Wiseman or something, then Alper and Sagoon is the best choice. Another thing that they possibly could do, and I would advise against it, is they could trade back from 11. Maybe they want Kai Jones, and Kai Jones is probably going outside the lottery, but he is very intriguing. They might like what they see in Kai Jones, they're probably going to work Kai Jones out. If they like what they see, they possibly can trade back maybe to well, Oklahoma or somebody, and they could probably get a later pick and some more assets, and then somebody else can get the 11 pick. But that's another option. Again, I would advise against it. I'm not really a fan of that option, but these are some things that they can do in the draft to uh, better place themselves for the future. The final thing I'm going to talk about is free agency. Now, the Hornets could have around $34 million in cash space if they renounce all their cap holes, but it's more likely that they don't and have somewhere around 13 million in cap space, plus exceptions. So what can they do with that 13 million in cap space? Well, they need some center help, they really do. Now, Cody Zeller is really good, but obviously he might not fit this timeline, especially if they wanna play more up pace with Melo. He likes to play out there and get out there and run, and if James Brago wants to embrace Melo a little bit more, he could speed up the game a little bit for him. Um, so they might want a more athletic center than somebody like Cody Zeller. Again, I like Cody Zeller. Resigning him might not be a bad idea. And honestly, I would say it's a good idea. He's been a part of the team basically his whole career. Not basically, yeah, he's been a part of the team his whole career. He was um, doing his thing. He's definitely a starting caliber center. If you want to move him to the bench, that's fine. But he's a really good center, and I like that. Other options they could consider would be somebody like Willie Colstein, Nerlens Noel, JaVale McGee. Those are some other options that they can consider. Maybe try and find somebody or find a way to bring in somebody like Mo Bamba might be something they can consider. Uh, other options, they can also use some additional shooting. Guys like Reggie Bullock can help them. Um, you also have guys like Neymar Bay. At least I know I mentioned these same guys like every other video. But these kind of guys are the guys that you go for that can help your team. Um, you know, Otto Porter can do some shooting for the team. He's actually a pretty good shooter, decent defender. Probably wouldn't cost that much money. These are some options that they can go after. These are some options, some players that they can target in free agency that could help further their already budding team. Because this team is good. Like, I really like the Hornets. I expect them to be fighting for a top five seed next season. I believe they're going to make the playoffs. I think they're going to be really good at extra year. LaMelo, and he should be healthy. You know, he played injured. I know he didn't play great down the street, but I, you know, I credit some of that to injury. So I definitely, definitely, definitely think this is a budding team and I like what's going on. Um, also, they need to re-sign Devontae Graham if possible, if the contracts work again. He might just want out, you know, he might want to be a starting caliber point guard. And honestly, he is a starting caliber point guard on some other teams that need a point guard. I'm not saying he's French all-star or anything, but he's a point guard on a good team. Can probably give you 15 and seven or nine. And his efficiency probably will increase when he's on a better team that's better fit for him. So, you know, Boston probably should make a move for him and I wouldn't be that surprised um, but that's gonna go ahead and wrap up my video again if you like the video help your boy out I am so close to 100 subscribers as of the recording of this video and you can get me there if you just like and subscribe to the channel because your boy needs the help your boy out here dropping videos dropping content I hope that my content is at least decent so go ahead and help me out until the next time peace